Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and this week I think it's time to finally start building a bonnet bulge for the Alfa Rari. All right, so we are getting there on the uh, on the Alfa Rari engine. We've got um, injector stalled. Those watching last week will have seen that it was the uh, the last thing I did. There was some concerns that I might not be able to get the uh, rocker covers off now that the, uh, the the brackets are here, and that may be the case. Um, uh, I can remove the plenum. It's uh, it's it's not that big a deal for the the rare occasion that I would have to actually take the uh, valve covers off. If I have to do a bit further disassembly, it's annoying, but this whole idea of this engine is a compromise. If I could have left it all standard, it would have been much easier, but it's just, it just would have sat way too high in the, uh, in the engine bay to leave it that way. Even as it is, it's still gonna have a bigger bonnet bulge than I really wanted to do, but Beggars can't be choosers, this is just the way it, uh, it goes. So let's uh, saddle it up and get it back in so then we can start working out where our bonnet bulge is actually gonna go. Alright, so I've been weighing up exactly how to do this bonnet bulge for quite a while. I've had lots of people throw suggestions around, oh, I should do it like this car or like that car. And I'm not particularly trying to copy any specific car just because I have to make what works with this. And I've got a, I've got a picture in my head of how I'm going to do it. Um, to start with, what I think I might do is actually, um, obviously, as you can see here, the uh, the current hole that I cut does not clear the uh, the front. That was intentional. It was just to get it on before to get a bit of an idea. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, mark a couple of uh, lines from these corners coming diagonally down. And um, my basic idea is to have a pretty flat plate at the top and then taper the sides and taper the front up and have it sort of reasonably pleasing, uh, you know, I, I want to make it as subtle-ish as I can. Uh, obviously, it's going to be bigger than I wanted it to, but that's just what has to happen. So first things first, let's mark this out, cut it out, and uh, then we'll start playing around and seeing what else I need to adjust to get it to fit. Yeah, so now you can see that I'm sort of working with ideas. I'm sort of, uh, yeah, just, I'm gonna play around with the cardboard, see what I can come up with, and um, yeah, and we'll see what we can make that sort of looks nice. At this stage, it looks like the front's gonna have to come up a little bit more, and uh, I'm thinking I might actually make the uh, transition start a little bit further back from the front lip of this uh, this bonnet, so it'll sort of, yeah, I just, just need to make it blend nicely and uh, yeah, I'm just throwing it out there. That's why I can work in cardboard much easier than steel and just play. Okay, well I've got an initial uh, sort of shape there and I'm not really that happy with it. It's a little bit too narrow. I want it to sort of, I don't know, blend out a little bit more. It's a bit narrow, a bit steep. So um, what I'm thinking is I'm going to actually uh, broaden it out a little bit more. I've cut out a couple of uh, these wedges just to sort of add to the front so that I can play around with it, get the shape right here because it's much, as I said, it's much easier in cardboard than it is in steel.
All right, that is starting to sort of take the shape of what I was thinking. Uh, just making it a little bit wider, I think it sort of, the shape is a little bit better. I'll be uh, aiming to smooth out the sharp edges and stuff when I uh, actually make it out of steel, obviously. Um, it's gonna take a little bit of tweaking to get it just right, but uh, the, the basic concept is getting there. Um, I know some of you are absolutely gonna hate it, some of you are gonna like it, um, but either way, that's what's gonna happen. I mean, fitting that engine in there, it, it had to happen. So um, I'm gonna start working now on actually trimming out the, uh, the steel of the bonnet, uh, the, the current shape, so that I can uh, make sure it fits now with the, uh, the filters and stuff in it. I just didn't want to cut it up until I knew where I was gonna cut it. All right, so um, things are coming together. I like the basic shape of this, but it's still a long way off yet. Um, you may be wondering why I was using this uh, part of the bonnet again, rather than just making it again out of this uh, sheet. And mostly because it already has this compound curve in it, so it already curves this way and this way. That said, um, I am going to keep working things now Obviously, I don't like how sharp these corners are. I want this to round off more, but I do want it flat, sort of a square edge around the top. Um, as you may have seen, and, uh, and it may be becoming much more obvious now, my plan is to keep with the old Ferrari theme, and um, uh, they've been doing it for since the 50s, 60s. Um, and uh, they still do it on the uh, the brand new cars today, is having a, um, a window through so you can see the engine. And that is what I'm going to be doing on this car. I'm going to have a big um, Perspex type window in the top here um, so that you can actually see these plenum covers. That is, that is the whole point in, uh, that's a, a big point in keeping these plenum covers. Um, I know some people would like to see it with uh, individual throttle bodies or something like that, but I'm going to spend all this time putting Ferrari engine in the car. I want you to be able to see instantly that it's a Ferrari engine, not every time I open the bonnet and somebody goes, oh, what engine is that? Because it doesn't say Ferrari anywhere else. So um, that's, the, uh, that's the point. It's going to be a visual uh, draw, but I definitely want this a bit smoother. But the next step is I'm going to uh, now trim these out and make sure I have enough clearance so I'm going to mark either side of here, cut out the, uh, the, the rest of the bonnet and then put the, uh, uh, the rest of the piping in and make sure that everything clears nicely. Now I've got it in, um, as you can see, I've had to raise up the front to get a bit more clearance, just, just so that there's enough so with the engine movement and also when I'm going to be running a, uh, a cover over the, the engine, obviously I don't want the engine to actually touch that cover. Um, so I've got a new plan moving forward because I need to work out how to actually mount the, the cover to the the steel and what i've got i've got an idea basically what i'm going to do is i'm going to make a frame around for the cover and that's the first thing i'm going to do and uh that i'm going to make out of some uh 90 degree bends 90 degree uh sort of angle all the way around and uh and form that up and then i can make my bulge fit that and that's going to be a much easier way than the way i've been struggling through it so far
All right, so you can see here I've made my basic frame up that sits over the top of these, uh, these plenums. And what I wanna do now is I wanna add a slight curve to either side um, to match the bonnet because we've got this, this sort of slight curve here. So I'm gonna get this out now and uh, get on the shrinker and I'm gonna shrink this edge on either side, which should give us a nice, very subtle bow and um, hopefully fit up just right. Okay, so holding this up, there's only a very slight curve, but it's just enough to line up nicely with the, uh, with the curve of the bonnet. There's not a lot in it, but uh, that's what we want. We want just that slight, slight doming of the, uh, of the frame. I'm seeing it up here on a couple of spaces. I've got to uh, keep this at just the right height. I'll trim this out later so that it obviously is going to give more clearance, uh, this sort of reinforcing section. Uh, I'll make sure that radiuses over the top of these uh, throttle bodies. And um, yeah, we're, uh, I'm, I'm happy with how this is looking now. I'm, uh, it's obviously very slow, but this is a very important part of the car to get right, and uh, I want to do it justice. All right, so I've done a bit of trimming and uh, now I've got this so that I've got a curve coming this way on this panel and I'm gonna make it sort of curve around the corner so the front will be a, uh, a curve going around. There'll be a line around the edge which will sort of match in with uh, the style of the car. This is gonna emulate the car enough to, uh, to, to be functional for what I need, but also, um, yeah, but also sort of look pleasing and uh, and work at least for what I am looking for. So I've got my framework there, I've got this piece is now right, so now I'm going to go back, cut out again uh, these side pieces and this time I'm going to try and shape it and get it just right so that it fits in perfectly uh, with what I'm looking for. But um, just before that I'm going to do that, I'll just flip it over, I'll use this same piece on the other side just to make sure it's nice and symmetrical and um, we'll be cooking with gas. All right, so you can see here that uh, this is fitting much nicer. I use the uh, the bender, the folder, to actually sort of put some light uh, folds all the way around this, and that's going to be really easy to uh, sort of planish and uh, and radius that out. It's uh, obviously not perfectly smooth at the moment, but that will be very easy to smooth up. And um, now it's time to start curving off this front edge, which is going to be, I think, probably just a bit of hammer and dolly work, and just see how I go in, uh, in making this curve around the way I want it to, and make a nice smooth transition. That's better. That's, uh, that's what I was looking for. That is so much time going backwards and forwards, getting the radius on these corners and getting everything to fit up just nicely, getting the gaps all nice and neat. And I mean, they're not perfect, but they're reasonable. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the overall symmetry. Everything seems to line up nicely. It is the shape I was looking for. Oh, that's a lot of work. Okay, so under here you can see my frame, which I've actually disconnected because I want to be able to get out and uh, 
uh, primer underneath it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take off some of this reinforcing here. I am going to be adding back reinforcing under this bonnet. Also, the bulge itself is going to give the bonnet a lot more strength because uh, the flat, relatively flat panel is very flimsy, whereas all of these angles give it a lot more structure. Um, it's still got the, uh, the crumple zones in here, which uh, will be staying intact. Um, but for now, I think I'm going to cut it somewhere across the, here and through here and uh, remove this part so that I can actually uh, tie the bulge to the structure of the bonnet. I know I always say it, but that was a lot of work. Um, but it was quite rewarding. I'm really happy with the result. I'm really happy that that is, it's not a massive, superly offensive bonnet bulge. Okay, yeah, it is pretty big, but it had to be. It's got a very big engine for a little car. Uh, but I'm really happy with how that turned out. I'm happy with the curve now, that it's uh, that it's nice and symmetrical and basically the shape I want. It's got the reinforcing of that double lip, which I will weld all together, and, uh, and that will give it sort of that uh, extra structure around the top edge so that when I do put that Perspex cover in there that uh, will show off the, uh, the Ferrari engine. Uh, it will actually have some, it'll be solid. That Just giving it that, that slight curve as well also will help in uh, adding strength. If it was just flat, if it's if it's perfectly flat, it can flap a lot. Just adding that little bit of curve will, will give it a lot more structure. So it shouldn't uh, it shouldn't sort of flap and stuff when it uh, uh, gets in the wind. And also, I mean, it looks a bit more natural shape giving it that curve. I am, I am stoked, but that is all the time I have this week. So that means it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, so we have finally come up to date with Alpha's road cars, the 4C. Alpha's 4C concept was unveiled at the 2011 Geneva Motor Show and was voted most beautiful concept car of the year. Two years later, the production car was launched using a lot of the technology Alpha had developed while producing the 8C. The chassis of the cars are monocoque, made entirely from the carbon fibre with aluminium uh, subframes, roofing reinforcement and engine mounting. The chassis weight is 107 kilos with a final dry kerb weight of 895 kilos. Powered by 1.75 litre turbo charged four cylinder engine making 240 horsepower. It has a six speed twin dry clutch gearbox and can do 0 to 100 k's in 4.2 seconds. The 4C Spider is introduced in 2014, but due to the extra reinforcing, it weighed 45 kilos more than the coupe. In 2018, the 4C Competizione was announced with only 108 cars released worldwide. Interestingly, Japan got 25 units, Australia got 10, and the US didn't get any. All right, I am quite happy with this week's um, progress. This is looking really good. It's still gonna probably add some radiuses to the inside corners here, and obviously I've got to weld it all up and tidy it up, which I will be tackling next week, but I'm, it's, it's looking good. That is sort of what I had pictured in my head. Um, it's not too enormous. Okay, yes, it is rather large, but that is a big engine in the little car, so that's what we're gonna <laughs> I do. Feel, I feel like that could be a meme somewhere. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you like to see the videos a day early, you can join us on Patreon and get to watch them ad free. Yep. And you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram um, and to see these things sort of as they happen. All right, guys. See you next Thanks. time. And was voted most beautiful car concept of the year. Concept car. Most beautiful car concept of the year. Concept. <laughs> The chassis of the car is a monocoque. <laughs> the chassis of the car is a monocoque, entirely made of <laughs> entirely made from carbon fibbing. <laughs> What's that? <laughs>